cycling friends, and welcome back for another top 10 video. This time around, we are counting down the top 10 most important moments in Machu van der Poel's career so far. And let me tell you, this was a difficult assignment. Between his 201 cyclocross victories, World Cup mountain bike success, and road racing wizardry, picking just 10 was no easy feat. But we're gonna give it our best shot, starting with number 10. There are cycling origin stories in which an athlete must overcome great adversity to find success at the highest level. This is not one of those stories. In his first year as an under-19 cyclocross racer, Machu van der Poel raced 26 UCI races and he won 24 of them. Already having won the European Championship and the Dutch National Championship, he capped off his coming out party with a win at the 2012 Junior Cyclocross World Championships, beating by eight seconds his rival for life, Wout Van Aert. Yeah, I, I see in the comments section, Van Aert, not Van Aert. As our first of what is probably going to be many asides, the next season, 2012-2013, Machu not only ran the table winning all 24 cyclocross races he entered, but he also became the first racer ever to repeat as junior cyclocross world champion before Ben Tullett did it in 2017 and 18. Coming in at number 9 is the 2013 Junior World Championship Road Race in Florence, Italy. For those of you who think Van der Poel is new to racing on the road, that is far, far from the case. He may not have participated in many of the biggest races until more recently, but he was winning on the tarmac from day one. In what will become a familiar theme throughout his career, Van der Poel attacked a long climb, not because it was planned, but because it felt right. On this day, he distanced himself from the pack to take the win solo. Future elite world champ Mads Pedersen came in second place in that race. In the A spot is another breakout performance on the road the 2018 Elite Dutch Road Championships. After spending his formative years racing cyclocross, this was Machu's reintroduction to the road racing world. At his family's home stomping grounds in Hogerheide, where he had won the sixth round of the Cyclocross World Cup months earlier, Van der Poel spent most of the day in a breakaway, was swallowed back into the pack, and still had the strength and power to win the sprint going away, reminding the cycling world once again that he was more than a one-disciplined pony. And number seven is the 2019 edition of the Houghton Cross DVV Trophy Race in Ronsa that was won by Tone Arts. You may ask why a race won by Tone Arts would be on a list cataloging Machu van der Poel's most important moments, and I don't blame you for doing so. The reason this race is important is because it is the first time in a span of 408 days and 35 straight victories that Machu van der Poel lost a cyclocross race. Not since the same Tone Arts beat him at Copenburg Cross over a year before had Van der Poel not crossed the finish line first. So it was easier to point out the loss than try to pick out one of the dozens of wins. Not too broken up about having his streak end, Machu shrugged off the anomalous third place finish and went on to win the next 16 races before finally losing again in 2020, this time to Tom Pidcock at Havre. The sixth most important moment brings us to the present day and Machu's debut at the 2021 Strada Bianca. That race showcased an important display of what makes Machu, Machu. He floated through the gravel sectors before joining small selection. In the final kilometer, he launched an attack on the brutal finishing climb that left world champ Julian Alaphilippe in his Watt wake. This was the same climb that hobbled Wout a few years earlier. Although Strade was a big road win and one that Machu had on his career checklist, it is far from his most important road win ever. For number five, we are staying on the road and revisiting the 2019 Brabantse Pale. At this point, Machu shows signs of greatness on the road with a win at Dwars and fourth at the 2019 Flanders, but he still wasn't talked about as a favorite. For Brabantse Pale, Van der Poel covered Alaphilippe's move with 17 kilometers to go. In the finale, he went to the front of a group that included Julian Alaphilippe, Tim Wellens, and Michael Matthews. From the less than advantageous position of leading out this group of hitters, he wound up his sprint with 150 meters to go and unleashed an acceleration that none of them could match. This was the race that the road racing world finally started to figure out that the cyclocross kid may be something special. For our fourth most important moment, we are going to leave the road and hit the dirt. 
After showing that he could win in cyclocross, and before his road exploits really got rolling, Matthew caught the fat tire bug and hit the World Cup cross-country mountain bike circuit in 2017. After a crash-filled debut at Nova Mesto in which he still managed to finish 8th, Vanderpool already knew he could find success in this discipline as well. I'm very happy but also a little bit disappointed I think with some, some more luck I could have been on the podium today. A virtual unknown in this world, he made his mark the next week at Obstadt, finishing an eye-opening second place and only losing to world champion Nino Scherter. In 2019, Vanderpool returned to Nova Mesto, and two years after his debut, he won his first World Cup event at the same venue, matching Scherter move for move before putting in a blistering attack through the feed zone that broke the world champ. Machu went on to win Val de Sol and Lenzerheide as well that year. He's also won eight times in the World Cup short track mountain bike discipline, but those really are just short cross races, so right in his wheelhouse. And here we are at our top three. And in the third spot is the Cyclocross World Championships. For a guy who has won 201 cyclocross races, coming up with the most important wins is an impossible task. But the 2015 Tabor World Championships, in which he won his first elite cyclocross world's title, has to be up there. The year before, he lost to Wout in the U23 World Champs. So this was another battle in that already years-long rivalry. In this one, Vanderpool went solo on lap two and never looked back, conquering the muddy to board terrain. Wout would have his revenge though, sweeping the next three world championships. In a rare sign of cyclocross futility for Vanderpool, it wasn't until 2019 in Bonza before he won his second world championship. He has since followed that up with a championship win at Dusseldorf in 2020 and Ostenda in 2021. Which brings us to our top two most important cycling moments in Machu Vanderpool's career. In the second spot is the Tour of Flanders. It's the most important road race in Flanders and a career goal for any racer. In 2020, the cycling world got the matchup they wanted. Wout van Aert versus Machu Vanderpool, going head to head on the cobble climbs around Odenarda. Throw Julian Alphalippe into the mix and the race became an instant classic while it was still happening. Alaphilippe's freak run-in with a moto meant that the two cyclocross titans would go to the line together to see who would take the win. Sprinting side by side, it came down to a bike throw and Vanderpool, by mere inches, took the victory over his rival. I almost had to do some last minute reshuffling with the results of the 2021 Flanders, but it's still notable that a guy who tells the world he's not on a good day can still almost pull off the win and is sprinting it out for second place. Now, Matthew Vanderpool may have been born in Belgium and he may also live in Belgium, but there is no mistaking his nationality. He is Dutch. And for a Dutch bike racer, no event is more important than the Amstel Gold Race. And for that reason, it is Matthew Vanderpool's improbable and stunning victory at the 2019 edition of Amstel that is his most important moment in cycling so far. Vanderpool missed the initial break, but did not quit. He single-handedly brought back the chase group, bridging a minute gap to make the catch in the final 500 meters. And without missing a beat, he continued to push through, winning the sprint before collapsing in exhaustion. So exhausted, he didn't even have the strength to raise his hands for a victory salute. From that day on, Matthew Vanderpool was a Dutch legend and a favorite for every road race he entered going forward. You can debate from here until the end of time what is the most important cycling race in the world. But for Matthew Vanderpool, it's clear that 2019 Amstel Gold stands out as the biggest race and the most important win so far. Let us know what your favorite Matthew Vanderpool moments are in the comments below. I'm more than certain that next episode I'll have even more pronunciation corrections to make so I look forward to those comments as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, cycling friends.